In this video, we're modeling a piece of the very most northern part of Scandinavia, far above the polar circle, the home for the thundering iron ore trains in a nature where sun never sets in the summer and never rises in the winter. and welcome to another video tutorial in which we will model the very north part of Scandinavia, namely Lapland. <laughs> yeah, and how did I come up with this idea? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I've had this iron ore train for, for some years. Uh, Marklin has uh, issued several uh, different versions of it, everything from early day DM2, DM3 to the, the more uh, recent Iora train. Rocco has made a model of it too. So there's uh, plenty of you guys out there, I guess, who has this set. And uh, now, just uh, a few months back, uh, a company called Agenal. Uh, released amazingly detailed sleeping cars which also goes on the same track up to uh, most often Abisko Tourist Center which is a it's a stop for tourists who wants to you know hike in in the wilderness there and I you know this this car I, I have to show you some of the details it's it's just amazing. I've never seen anything like this in HO scale before. These sleeping cars are available both in brown, which is a 60s, 70s style, and the blue, and also this gray with the red doors, which I think is the most appealing, and also the new black one. For me, it was an easy pick. I rode with these trains when I did my military service up in Boden during the late. 80s. Look at these gangways. They're actually made of rubber, like the prototype. Spring-loaded buffers, etched footsteps. And look at that sign above the footstep. I mean, how do they even print that? There are even etched details underneath the car. And in the boogies, the springs are separately mounted. And the same detail level goes for the interior as well. I really need to assemble light into those. All right, so I'm putting up a link to to this to page where you find these cars. So if you have the iron ore train, this is a perfect match to go with that on the same tracks. Yeah, and we're starting off by uh, building this um, uh, Obisko Tourist Center Red Cabin Station. Let's admit I was a bit lucky because I found this kit. It's a kit of a station called Linnefors. And it's pretty close. If you look at the Abisko tourist station here, it's uh, it has these uh, steps here. I have to build those. I have to open up this uh, front side. I also have to add some of these details and I have to modify the windows, uh, reduce the woodwork in those. Otherwise, the kit is pretty straightforward. So, and this is a, it's a laser cut kit, so it's uh, not a big deal to assemble it. It's just to, it ha typically has an inner part which uh, holds up the structure and then you have to be a bit uh, on your guard to realize what part you need to modify before you start the assembly. So here I've cut out some of the woodwork in the, in the windows and then I have to make a cutout also for the extra door and window for the entrance. It's a good idea to make a few notes uh, either directly on the laser sheets or on the paper to remember what modifications you need to do ahead of assembly. So here it goes like this. And then I'm starting with the, with the panel, the outside paneling of the house like this. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, it's uh, very nice when you can take the shortcut uh, via a kit like this, because scratch building uh, buildings is uh, very, very time consuming. A building like this can easily take like 40, 50 hours to build from scratch. This building, the modification I needed to do with the windows and everything. So it didn't take more than two days 
which is about 15 hours. The leftover parts, which uh, came from that big entrance on the side, becomes stairs here instead. And then, of course, the sign needs to be glued in place. Abisko turiststation. And the clock. Yeah, like that. It's uh, permanently on 10 minutes past 10. The support pillar for the new entrance is made from 2 by 2 millimeter spruce. And I need two of them. And I need to paint them red. So I'm using the Vallejo 926 red, which matches the woodwork on that kit pretty well. Yeah, and then it's just to glue those in place and assemble the roof like that. Now this Obisco tourist station will be a snap-in module, which is a replaceable part of the main station on my layout. So here's the woodwork for that snap-in frame with the station in place already. First thing we're going to do now is the platform. I've previously made a lot of platforms here on the channel in styrofoam, but this time I'll do it in plywood instead. And I'm adding a 12 millimeter with a four millimeter thick sheet like this. That sums up to a 16 millimeter total height, which uh, seems to be a good match for modern cars in edge of scale. Once dry, you also need to sand the edge ahead of plastering. I did my really best to uh, glue these together perfectly straight, but uh, you know how it is. Uh, there is always room for some sanding. And the plaster I'm using is just a standard uh, indoor plaster, which you typically use uh, indoors when you redecorate your walls. Now, and uh, I'm also plastering the entire surface of the platform. Otherwise, the grain from the wood shows through and we don't want that in this location. And this is what it looks like when plastered. All we need to do now when plaster has dried, which is typically overnight, is to sand. And I use a 400 grit paper for that. Then I make an engraving into the plaster using a knife and a steel scale as guide. And this will be the concrete edge of the platform. The platform uh, cover will be asphalt. To engrave the edges between the concrete blocks I use a triangular file. And I just file these uh, very easily into the plaster. Yeah. When engraving place, I spray paint this using a water based spray paint. I can really recommend these uh, from Liquitex. You can spray indoors with these without uh, having the entire family complaining about the smell. Once that uh, paint has dried, it's time to do some weathering. For this I use black, burnt umber and cavalry brown. The cavalry brown represents a kind of rusty red tone. And I use a stiff brush with only a tiny amount of paint on. So this is what we call a dry brushing. You brush most off on the side and then just streaking over the edge of the platform like this. It's actually pretty easy to do this. Yeah, this one's been there for a long time. Once I'm done with the edge, I mask over that edge to protect the paint. We're going to take a shortcut to the cover of this uh, platform via the Noch product 60825, which is asphalt gray. And for application, I'm using the sponge roller, which uh, came with that paint. This uh, asphalt uh, texture can be made in many ways. 
This is uh, the easy way, I think, uh, to do it. There is a cost for the paint on the roller, of course, but looking in the rearview mirror, I had this uh, for over a year and I'm building like every day. So next move is to glue the platform in place on this uh, wooden framework. The flat surface here is used as a support area for the module, but I will make it a bit curved following the backdrop using paper boxes or parts of paper boxes. I can really recommend using those. They're super low cost, easy to work with and uh, easy to assemble as well. I will also do the support and the underlying structure for the path going up into the mountains from the station in the corrugated cardboard. Only thing you should avoid building in corrugated cardboard is like platforms and things that are thin and uh, in the top surface because the cardboard expands with the humidity so that could cause you problems. I have some bad experience with that, but the structural pieces like this is uh, then cardboard, corrugated cardboard is really cheap and very efficient. I hold it in place until it has dried using paper tape, masking tape. I also cut the landscape outline in corrugated cardboard and make the filling with crumbled newspapers. Hold them in place using paper tape. We will now cover this with paper towels. And I use a bit thicker paper to avoid having it breaking all the time. Along the edges I fix it using wood glue, white glue or PVA glue. That's Elmer Construction in the US and Ponal in Germany. Once I have the paper along the edge in place, I mix uh, three parts water with one part glue and I soak the paper into this uh, water glue mix and then I add the next row of paper just inside, soak that as well and continue until I have covered the entire landscape. Cover any cracks or holes with a new sheet of paper and soak that with water glue mix as well. To avoid using too much plaster later, I'm filling as much as possible with styrofoam. This since styrofoam is so light and easy to work with and I glue that in place with paper tape as well. Once the glue has dried, your landscape is uh, kind of semi-hard and then it's perfect to make changes if there's some parts you don't like or sticking up too much or sticking up too little, then you can adjust that at this point. With that done, it's time to cover the landscape with a layer of gypsum or Paris plaster. And I spread that with a wide brush over the entire surface like this. Once covered, leave to dry overnight. Now to smoothen the surface and fill cracks and crevices you don't want, I use a concrete based plaster which do not shrink or crack. Both Noch and Woodland Senec has uh, products uh, like this uh, in their assortment uh, landscape plaster. Next move is to paint the entire landscape in a light brown color. I do that uh, with a wide brush and I thin it a lot. Leave it to dry and then it's time to put on the top part here because I want to achieve a forced perspective so the objects on top should be uh, very small and not very significant. Also more bleached in color so up on top I only add turf here at this stage and then further down I apply a layer first of wood glue, it's a PVA glue and a short static grass. This is a meadow green 2.5 millimeter grass and in the lower terrain closest to the viewer I add in also 12 millimeter 
grass and go towards a bit of brighter colors as well. Uh, one of the more quest uh, common questions I get from viewers here on YouTube is uh, how to get the 12 millimeter grass to stand up properly. Yeah, the trick is to not load too much into your applicator. Uh, and also to mix length mix uh, here I have a 2.5 6 and 12 millimeter and as you see it's uh, not a problem to get the 12 millimeter grass to stand up properly another good advice is uh, not to shake the applicator all that much but let the straws fly out from the charge they have rather than just fall out from the shaking movement now it's time to make that uh, final touch on the gravel road and the parking spot behind the station. This is made using the same type of sand plaster I used previously for the platform. And I smoothen it out with a wetted sponge. This is uh, just a standard dishing sponge like this. And once dry I sand it with again 400 grit paper. The edges of uh, gravel paths and roads are typically more coarse than uh, the actual path itself. We'll achieve that uh, by gluing chinsilla sand in place here. Chinsilla sand is found uh, low cost in your Sioux store. All we need to do now is to give these a uh, uniform color. And that is done with the tiles grout. I bought a pack of three colors, it's light grey, dark grey and brown and I mix them until I find a gravel road color which uh, suits me and I put that into that uh, container. I'm gonna fix the grout using spray glue, so I'm spraying the area here first and then I'm sprinkling on quite richly with this uh, grout mix and then I spread the grout both into the sides of the road and in the road surface using a soft uh, paint brush like this. And now I got the uniform color of uh, both the chinsilla sand and the road surface. Same with the path leading out into the wilderness. At this stage I felt that something was missing. I wanted something on the horizon or at the top of my landscape module. And I decided to go for uh, some woodland underbrush. I glue that in place uh, using the same uh, PVA glue until it looks more like this. Yeah, this is much better. Now we get started on the trees. The most common tree here is uh, uh, mountain birches or aspens as you call them in the US. I will make these from seafoam. Most manufacturer has something like this in their assortment. This one's from Noch, they call it nature trees. What you need to do first is to remove the leaves up in the flower. And that is easily made using tweezer. And then we're gonna paint the trunk in natural gray eight. This is a very light gray paint. I do really recommend using light gray rather than white because the trees are simply not white. The branches on a birch is black. So we're painting just the branches with black. Avoid getting black paint onto the trunk if possible. And then whilst the paint is still wet, we sprinkle in Woodland Scenic Fine Turf T45 Green Grass. This turf is slightly darker in color than the leaves we will put on top of them, which gives the foliage a nice depth and just that perfect opacity. The paint has dried, we're applying a layer of spray glue uh, to fix the leaves. It might also be necessary to add spray glue to get a nice coverage of that fine turf. It depends on how you quick you are with the turf after you paint it. And apply the leaves 
until you feel happy with the coverage. It should look something like this. Now making trees from sea foam is a really fast process, but still it will be very time consuming to build just sea foam trees. So we're using polyfiber for the bulk of the trees behind these sea foam trees. This is made using polyfiber. I spray that with uh, spray glue and sprinkle in only the leaves. For this I don't use any turf. Then just uh, spread that uh, polyfiber bush over the area where you want it. And if the spray glue still is a bit wet, it will stick to the surface. Now cut away branches from this uh, aspen tree or birch tree and you will have that perfect mountain birch. By doing this, I got away by only making two seafoam trees rest of it is actually polyfiber. The platform can be weathered using the same tile grout you used for the gravel road. In this case I'm using pastel chalk powder uh, in the colors of burnt sienna and brown. Now one thing that occurred to me was that my backdrop is very misty. It must have been taking a uh, early morning or something so I'm adding with the airbrush some white on top of those uh, bushes just to make them blend better with the backdrop. Only thing that missing uh, now is uh, some reindeers and of course the hikers which just got off the train to explore the wilderness. Alright, I hope you liked this tutorial on uh, how to build a piece of the very most northern part of Scandinavia. If you did, please help others to find this video by giving it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the materials, these uh, amazing uh, coaches uh, or anything, just post them in the comment field below and I'll try to respond to that as soon as possible. Did you know that this channel is made possible because a few of you viewers are kind enough to support the channel. You know, this uh, advertisement which is a pre-roll from YouTube on each video is uh, <laughs> a tiny contribution to a, a niche channel like this. So to get the good continuation of the channel, please support the channel. You can either do that by becoming a patron, click on the link or make a one-off donation via the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable the little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya!